Alzheimer's disease by far the most common type of uh, degenerative dementia that you have. It's a progressive neurological disorder where there is memory loss, personality change, global cognitive dysfunction and functional impairments. Short term memory is the one which is affected. And very importantly in late stages of the disease the patients become totally dependent for the basic activities of daily living also. And it accounts for almost 80% cases world over in India it accounts to almost 50 to 60% of total uh, burden. If you see the US burden more than 4 million have been affected and uh, with every age that is there it doubles with every decade after 65 and it has a large burden on the economy also. Biochemically the characteristic deficiency of acetylcholine occurs in the cortex, the amygdala and the hippocampus. The basal nucleus of Maynard is depleted of acetylcholine containing neurons. In a minority of them you have an autosomal dominant inheritance uh, which can present with the early onset of Alzheimer's. You have a apolipoprotein E gene which is coded in chromosome 19 when homozygous allele of E4 that increases the risk of Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's has been studied widely and we have found that it could be inherited and you could have an allele called as the apolipoprotein E gene which is coded in chromosome 19. The other risk factors as you say is age as you said above the age of 65 with every decade the risk doubles. Family history, very strong history, lifestyle, physical exercise, mental exercise, diet, tobacco, head injuries and hypertension, elevated serum cholesterol and elevated serum homocysteine all are proposed to be a mechanism which could hasten the Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease anatomically correlates to three phases in the illness. One is the limbic system where the memory gets affected, the parietal lobe gets affected so the spatial organization and function and finally the frontal lobe gets affected so the behavior is affected there. So the changes that happen you get uh, something called as a diminished blood flow, neurofibrillary tangles and amyloid neuritic plaques if you do a biopsy you do find it and there is degeneration of the hippocampus, the cerebral cortex, the hypothalamus and the brainstem. The course of the disease it could uh, vary from the mild disease where uh, if you do an MMSC it would be around 20 to 24 out of 30. Uh, primarily the memory and visuospatial defects would occur with mild executive functioning impairment. But in the moderate disease when the MMSC is between 11 to 20 they have aphasias, apraxias, loss of IADLs and uh, may require assistance for ADLs and the neuropsychiatric symptoms would start. And in the severe form when the MMSC is 0 to 10 they have profound neuropsychiatric manifestations and they can have extrapyramidal symptoms, dysphagias, gait disturbances etc. can occur and death usually occurs 8 to 12 years after the diagnosis. Institutionalization is commonly increasing basically because of the neuropsychiatric manifestations, loss of ADLs and caregiver stress. So coming on to the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, it is predominantly a clinical diagnosis that we have to do. The history, the mental state evaluation, the physical examination, limited laboratory testing and in main cases neuroimaging more extensive neurological testing may be there needed in some cases a depression screen has to be done in most of the patients. MRI finding you might find that bilateral hippocampal atrophy may be there but it is not a specific sign or neither it is sensitive for Alzheimer's disease. Important blood test that has to be done a complete blood count, uh, electrolytes, the glucose, the blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, serum B12, the TSH and liver function test to rule out other treatable causes of dementia. So if you see here this is the MRI showing atrophy of the hippocampal region here you can see that the bilateral hippocampal region there is atrophy which is uh, seen in Alzheimer's disease but it is not more specific. Compare the central sulci of the Alzheimer's patient with the normal if you see an 81 year old patient you find that there is a gross decrease in the uh, sulci that is there and atrophy you can see there. A 75 or year old Alzheimer's disease patient you can see that there is reduced blood supply on SPECT in the temporal areas very specifically you can see that the blood supply is grossly decreased in the temporal area. Grossly if you see a normal brain versus Alzheimer's brain this atrophy that is happening uh, predominantly in the uh, frontal, parietal and temporal lobes that is getting affected. Alzheimer's disease is a slowly progressive decline. The medications then slow the progression but halting is not possible. 
and many of the medications do not do that also. So, it is just a slowly progressive over 8 to 10 years there is a significant decline that could be occurring. The second commonest uh, dementia that we do encounter is vascular dementia. The onset is much earlier and usually vascular dementia is because of multiple strokes. So, usually there is an abrupt onset of symptoms and a stepwise deterioration. In Alzheimer's if you see it is starting from beginning only it is stepwise, whereas here in uh, uh, vascular dementia there is an abrupt onset and then there is a stepwise deterioration that could happen. Also there could be neurological findings which could suggest that there is a stroke would occur early. the patient can have uh, hemiplegia, hemiparesis or uh, cranial nerve deficits, extensa plantar X could be there and imaging generally would show you a, a cerebral infarx. The criteria for possible vascular uh, dementia, so cerebral vascular disease evident on history ex examination or imaging plus two of the following uh, should be there, dementia within 3 months, abrupt fluctuating and stepped progress.